بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ایکسپلورنگ دا سیکنڈ لرننگ پیتھ ماڈل دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی ول کنٹینیو ٹو ایکسپلور دا ٹاپک امپلیمنٹ ٹائم انٹیلیجنس میجرس دا لاسٹ سیٹ آف ٹائم انٹیلیجنس ڈیکس فنکشنس دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلور ان دس ویڈیو آر پیرالل پیریڈ سیم پیریڈ لاسٹ ایئر اینڈ ڈیٹ ایڈ so we are going to start with the date add dax function then have a look at the dax pattern associated with the date add function and then we are going to see the similarities and differences between date add and these other two dax functions so i am back on the dax.guide website and the function that we are looking at first is the date add function and the definition of this function says that it moves the given set of days by a specified interval and the syntax of this function has three parameters so first is the column which has the date which is obviously the date table and the column that has the date value then the number of intervals and interval so the number of intervals and interval are the same that we just saw in the last video for the for the dates in period function so the number of interval is is again going to be the same and the interval is again going to be the same with date month quarter and year so now look uh, now let's go and have a look at the time intelligence measure pattern which uses the date add function and then we are going to see what is the difference between date add and the other two functions that we just saw so the time intelligence measure or the time intelligence pattern that is associated with the date add function is the previous period so this is the third very important time intelligence pattern that you would find and this is very useful and again we have the calculate and inside the calculate we can pass any measure so this is the first flexible parameter then we have the date add function where the first parameter is always going to be the date column of the calendar table or the dates table and then we can specify the number of intervals and the interval itself so what this actually does is that in in the context of a particular date you can go back on, on within the calendar based on these two values so if it says minus 1 month then it it then you can actually go and compare the measure that you have on a particular date with the value which is 1 month and represents a previous period so this is a very common functionality or a very common pattern which is which is found in most calculations especially if we are looking at month on month percentages quarter over quarter percentages year over year percentages so all you need to do is that you need to just choose the quarter or year or month or day and then you can use this pattern to calculate the previous period and then you can use the previous period value and the current value to actually compute the difference between the current value and the previous value and then obviously you can calculate the month over month or quarter over quarter quarter or year over year percentage changes so this is a very important parameter so uh, it is better to um, just go to the power bi environment and have a, a clear understanding of how this particular pattern works so here inside the power bi desktop environment i have created a new measure by the name cos last month and here i am using the same time pat, uh, time intelligence pattern that has the calculate then i am using the same total cost function the total cost measure that we have been using in the previous patterns in the previous patterns as well then the date add time intelligence function is there the first parameter is obviously going to be the date column of the calendar table then minus 1 is my number of interval and month is my interval so what i am trying to achieve here is that i am i am trying to calculate my cost for last month so in whatever particular date i am looking at the value i am going to get the value which is one month prior to the current value so let's see the results inside this visualization that has been created here so inside this visualization again you have seen that we have the date column then the total cost measure and now the cost last month that has been just created using the date add time intelligence function so the first date in our 
data set is first january 1997 and the total cost for that particular date is this value but you are not going to see any value here because we do not have data which is one month prior to this, this particular date so one month prior means that first of december 1996 but we do not have any data for first of december 1996 so we do not see any value but if you come down here and see the date which is second first of sorry first of february 1997 then this is the total cost and the value that you see here the value that you see here 288.18 is exactly the same value that we saw for first january so the value from first january is now available uh, in front of the first february value same goes for second february here you are going to see the value 521.6 which is this value and so on and so forth so this is how this function works that if you are having a look at this function at any particular date then you are going to get the value which you have actually specified inside the measure so in our case it is minus one month it could be minus one day it could be minus 10 days it could be minus 10 quarters it could be anything uh, out of the day month quarter and year intervals that we can specify so if you have this kind of a scenario if you are able to actually get the current value and you are also getting the previous period which you have defined then by simply subtracting these two values simply creating a measure that subtracts this value is going to give you the change which is, which i am specifying here with the delta so delta means the change so the change in value and if you know the change then you can easily compute the rate of change or the percentage change which actually specifies the month on month or year over year or quarter over quarter quarter all of these calculations i am not going to go into those calculations those are very very easy to do and you can do it yourself but this is how you can actually use this date add function inside this particular previous period time intelligence pattern or time intelligence measure and you can compute results if you are familiar with these this kind of working in in tools like excel then it requires a lot of work a lot of effort and you have to think about a lot of things but this is very very simple if you do it in power bi and that is why these time intelligence functions and these time intelligence measure patterns are very powerful and very easily you can compute a lot of details about your particular application then we had two other dax time intelligence functions and these are very similar to the date add function so the first of these is the same period last year and if you see at the the definition of this it says that it returns a set of days days uh, it returns a set of dates in the current selection from the previous year so the only difference here is that this particular function is just focused on the previous year the kind of flexibility that we have in the date add function where we can specify any interval in the previous period this is just focused on the previous year and that is the only difference that is between the date add function and the same period last year function so you need to understand or just read, need to remember the difference between date add and same period last year the other function that has some kind of a similarity and a slight difference with date add is the parallel period so here the definition says that it returns a parallel period of dates given by the given set of dates and a specified interval so you can see that here in the syntax it has the same pattern so you give the date then you give the number of intervals and then you give the interval but here the difference is that in the interval you can only specify month quarter and year and that is why there is a different kind of a functionality associated associated with the parallel period than we have seen for the date add but instead of me explaining it here let's go and compute a measure using parallel period and then it would be very easy to understand so here i have created a new measure which is very much similar to the measure that we created earlier which is cost last month i have given it cost last month too and the pattern is the same 
and instead of the date add function i have written the parallel period dax function rest of the parameters are exactly the same that we gave for the date add parameter now let's have a look at the visualization the table visualization to see what is the difference in the working of parallel period and date add so here i have added the cost lm2 measure in the same visualization where we are having a look at the cost last month so this is using the date add and this is using the parallel period so again you are going to see that for the first month we do not see anything because there is no data associated with it but if i scroll down and i have a look at the values of the month of february so for the month of february for the first date which is first of february we see the response of cost last month where it brings up the value which was there on the 1st of january here it is bringing a value which represents the total sum of all the cost for the month of january and it actually puts this sum value against all the dates for the month of february so if you just come down and you are going to see that the same value appears till the last date which is the 28th of february 1997 and then for the month of march you have the the value here which represents the sum of all the dates for the month of february and how i can verify this i have verified this with this other visual which i have simply created by using the start of month column inside my calendar table and putting the total cost so here the total cost is actually now the sum of all the dates of the month of gen of the month of january so here you can see this 18365 appears for the month of february because remember we are using minus one month then this value appears for all the dates in the month of march whereas actually it is the sum of all the dates for the month of february so this is a subtle change that you are going to see uh, in terms of the behavior for date add and the parallel period tax function so remember that just uh, this pattern is uh, ag again exactly the same only we have swapped the the date add function with the with the parallel period function and you should also remember the difference in the functionality and the difference in the results before concluding this video i am back on the dax.guide website and here you have on the very front uh, page of this website or the home page of this website you have a time intelligence functions category and if i just go inside this time intelligence functions category you are going to see all the time intelligence functions which are there in the dax language we have covered a lot of these functions uh, we are going to cover a few more in the topic that is going to deal with the uh, uh, with the semi additive measures we are going to have a look at a few of these uh, in those but just remember that it is better that you should just spend some time here and have a look at all these functions most of these functions are very very similar and these belong to a set of families like we have seen like total ytd total mtd total qtd similarly dates ytd dates mtd and dates qtd so make sure that you know all of these functions although the most important ones we have covered but these could just co come as part of uh, the multiple choice options so instead of getting confused that okay what is this option if you know the function then you you are not into that kind of a confusion so this was all about the time intelligence dax functions and time intelligence measures we have tried to cover all of this in a in a lot of detail and uh, this is a very important topic and definitely you are going to get at least one or maybe two questions that has some kind of a dax intel time intelligence pattern or some kind of a dax time intelligence function involved in the question so that's all for this particular video and i'll catch you up in the next one